Welcome to Plant Based Kidneys Kitchen. Today we're making a kidney friendly coconut curry soup. I'm Michelle Crosmer. I am a renal dietitian, and this is Plant Based Kidneys Kitchen, where we cook kidney friendly, kidney protective recipes that are plant based, plant predominant, and plant focused. So, for the soup today, um, I'll quickly go through the ingredients that we need. So, we are going to do um, onion or shallot, garlic, some ginger root. You can use ginger powder if you don't have ginger root. Um, carrots, celery, zucchini, frozen shelled edamame. So basically you get it in a bag like this. So it's already frozen shelled, only ingredients, the soybean or the edamame. Um, we're using some tomato paste and then lemon or lime curry powder, and then some low sodium vegetable broth and some canned coconut milk. So first thing you want to do is have our pan turned on over medium heat and we're going to add in about a tablespoon of avocado oil or olive oil and we're going to saute our onions or shallot first. Basically everything's mixed together in a soup so it's not like it really matters um, how long we saute them but we want them to start getting a little aromatic translucent and then we'll add the other step in. So while that's going, what makes this soup kidney friendly? So not that other coconut curry type of soups aren't kidney friendly, but they're usually very high in sodium. So the sodium in our recipe is coming from a little bit in the low sodium vegetable broth that we're using. Um, we get a little bit in the tomato paste. So I'm not using like a whole bunch of canned tomato. That way we can control for the uh, potassium but this is a tomato paste and per two tablespoon portion, it has 25 milligrams of sodium. We're only using half that. And so basically, you know, two tablespoon portions, 360 milligrams of potassium. So again, we're using half that. The only ingredient is tomatoes, but it's concentrated. It helps give good fl tomato flavor to the soup without going over on sodium or potassium. Um, other things that make it kidney friendly is it is plant-based. Um, so it has, it utilizes plant protein. If someone has higher protein needs and wants to make this higher in protein, then I suggest to roast some tofu separately and then you can top your soup with it at the end. So I do have a roasted tofu recipe on my channel. Um, the other thing you could do, that's what I usually do when I cook this for my husband and I, is I will, after pressing the water out of the tofu, I will crumble it up add a marinade and then roast that in the oven and the crumbled tofu in the soup gives a good, really good texture um, versus just putting the tofu directly in the soup. It's, it's not as like crispy and um, it doesn't have the flavor added to it. So once our onions have started to saute a little bit, then we're going to add our celery and our carrots first. Those to take the longest to cook compared to the zucchini. So I like to get those in and going before the other stuff. So we're going to add two cups of diced celery. And then another two cups of some chopped up or diced carrot. Again, we'll just let that saute for a couple minutes. So ginger adds really good flavor to the soup. You could totally use a, um, if I don't have fresh ginger, I'll just use powdered ginger. There's nothing wrong with that. Um, I don't know, I'd say this is probably about an inch, inch and a half piece of the root that I'm using. Um, if you are using powdered ginger, then I would say anywhere from a quarter to half a teaspoon would be a good amount to use. It really depends how ginger you like it. I like really ginger, um, strong ginger and lime flavors in my curry soup. My husband doesn't like it as much, so kind of have to be mindful of how much I use because I'm feeding him and not just myself. Okay, so we're just going to really as much as finely as you can chop up this ginger. I actually made this soup uh, last week and I have a one and a half year old and he loved the soup but it's funny because he got a piece of ginger like he made this face and pulled it out of his mouth and it was like the tiniest little piece of ginger but obviously that's very powerful strong taste for him and of course he found a chunk of it so 
You didn't like that, but. So chop it up as finely as you can, or again, just use ginger powder. That's what you have, and that's what's easier. Another thing to keep in mind, so curry powder. This is a um, low sodium curry powder. So some curry powders have a little bit of salt, some have no salt. This one, sea salt is in the ingredient list, but um, there's only 20 milligrams of sodium per quarter teaspoon. I'm using about two teaspoons, so obviously it gives more than that, but this makes four plus servings of soup. So again, either get a low sodium curry powder or get uh, one that has you know, no sodium in it. The other thing to keep in mind too is I'm using curry powder, not curry paste. You are welcome to use curry paste, but usually that has some salt in it. So trying to keep this low sodium. That way at the end, when you serve up your dish, if you feel like it needs a little bit of salt, you could sprinkle in a little garlic salt or regular salt or some hot sauce or something that will add a little bit of sodium that way. Okay, so I'm going to add my ginger and my garlic to the carrots, celery, and onions or shallots that I have sauteing. I usually like shallots more in this soup. Um, I only had an, a white onion today, but I think shallots, one or two shallots, um, adds really good flavor. I know it's hard. I wish I had a camera above me. I don't, but just to show you, we're just sauteing all this together. And let's get our garlic in there. Okay, next thing is I'm going to add my tomato paste and then my curry powder. So I'm adding, oh, the garlic was about four cloves of garlic that I minced up. I'm doing one tablespoon of tomato paste. And then for the curry powder, I'm going to use two teaspoons of curry powder. Great thing with the curry powder too, you can do more if you want. If you taste it, you know, as you're cooking and you like it to be um, more curry flavor, then you can always add more. The smells already, I mean, seriously, onions and garlic and curry powder and ginger, I mean, the best smell. Okay. So again, I'm not going to add the edamame. I'm not going to add noodles. I'm not going to add the uh, zucchini yet. I'm just going to add my vegetable broth. So one carton, which is 32 ounces or four cups of a low sodium vegetable is what you're going to add. And then just FYI, low sodium means that per serving, it's 140 milligrams of sodium or less. So if you see here, this is 120 milligrams of sodium. And so that is what we want. Okay, so we're going to add our vegetable broth, give it all a stir, and then I have it over medium heat. You could do medium to high, but basically we want to stir it, cover it, bring it to a boil. Once it comes to a boil, we're going to turn it down to a simmer and then let it cook for 15 minutes before we add our other ingredients. Uh, carrots and celery take longer to get soft. There's nothing worse in my opinion than having like ch like crunchy celery with mushy zucchini and so we don't want to throw it all in together we're throwing we're going to again bring it to a boil reduce it to a simmer hey it's been 15 minutes since our soup has been simmering smells even better give it a stir and then we are going to add our zucchini so i like to thinly slice this but it's about one medium zucchini You could also use like, I don't know, green beans, asparagus, some other um, vegetable if you want. For our legume, we are going to do edamame. So again, this is frozen shelled edamame that doesn't have any salt added to it. And I'm doing about one cup portion. Give that a stir. 
And then honestly, that doesn't take very long to cook. So um, noodles. So you can use chickpea noodles. You can use whole wheat noodles. You can use whatever noodles you want. About a one cup dry portion. I have made this soup with all different kinds of noodles. And my favorite are either... Um, like spaghetti, I have an edamame spaghetti type of noodle that is fun, but I think the easiest to eat and one of the best is doing something that's like a little uh, macaroni or a shell or something small, that way it eats well and you don't have like long noodles with then these chopped up veggies. So one cup dry um, noodles and you're gonna add it directly into the pan. You don't have to cook it separately. So we're gonna give all that a stir and then we are going to let it simmer and cook for another anywhere from seven to 10 minutes. It depends how long it takes for your noodles to cook. Some noodles cook in, you know, six minutes, some are more like 12 minutes. So anywhere from seven to 10 minutes. And then after that, the only thing we have to add is our coconut milk and then some fresh lemon or lime. Okay, it has been another seven to 10 minutes, about eight minutes for me. So we wanna give our soup a check. Honestly, the noodles are almost cooked. The zucchini is getting tender. And now we're going to add our coconut milk and then some lemon or lime. So for the coconut milk, we don't use an entire can. We only need one cup for this recipe. So make sure that you give it a good shake. And again, you're using a canned coconut milk. That's typically what's used for cooking, um, not like the coconut milk that you drink from the cartons. This is more concentrated. So I'm going to measure out one cup. Great. And I was just going to give you a heads up. So obviously, I mean, there's some potassium in coconut. Obviously, it's higher in saturated fat, but we're using a one cup portion, which is about half the can. Um, and this is, you know, making four plus serving. So one cup of canned coconut milk. Pour it directly in here. And then squeeze your about a half of a lemon or lime. I'm actually only going to do about a quarter of this lemon because it's a little bit bigger. And again, my husband doesn't like too much citrus in it. Um, I think lime is typically better in a curry than lemon, but you can really do either. I don't have a lime right now, so I'm using a lemon. But squeeze that in there. Give it all a stir. Maybe I can... Bring this over and show you. Okay, so you see this awesome, beautiful orange golden color and creaminess from the coconut milk. And then the acid from the lemon. I mean, it's all so good. So I want these flavors to sit really just another three to five minutes, really. You can test your noodles. Yeah, mine are basically done. So I'm just gonna let those flavors sit for about two minutes and then we'll serve it up. Our soup is finally done. Let's serve it up, try it, and go through the nutrition information for it. So one serving of this soup is going to be two cups. So the total recipe makes four servings, eight cups total. So it's a pretty good portion of soup that you get, two cups portion. Let's serve that up. So while this cools a little, let's go through the nutrition information. So per serving, it's 282 calories, 8 grams of protein, 29 grams of carbohydrates, 6.5 grams of fiber. Both of those can vary a little depending on which noodles you use. 258 milligrams of sodium, 837 milligrams of potassium, and 133 milligrams of phosphorus. So the great thing is, is that 258 milligrams of sodium is great for a soup, very low sodium compared to any type of curry or soup that you would get from a restaurant, and it leaves room for you to add a little bit more flavor. We didn't add any salt at all in the cooking process. This is just the sodium that comes from the tomato paste and the veggie broth, basically. Um, so you can add some sriracha, you can add even a little bit of garlic salt. 
typically, um, you know, I'm cooking for a little one and then my husband and I, and so I don't add salt to it so I can serve my son without any added salt. My husband usually sprinkles a little garlic salt in. I usually do some sort of hot sauce. Um, and then red chili flakes would also be really good in it. So we'll try it without it. I already know I like it. I cook this all the time, at least once a week, but as you can see, it's got, I mean, the broth has so much flavor. We only use one pan and one cutting board and the noodles are cooked in with it. You get that amame. I don't know if I'm going to be able to eat this right now. And it's delicious. The coconut with curry powder with the lime and ginger or lemon and ginger is so good. Of course, I think it needs some heat. I used to add jalapenos to pretty much everything that I made. Um, and I can't do that anymore. <laughs> My son is eating food with us. So I have to add hot sauce at the end. But again, if you don't like it spicy, that's fine. You have plenty of room, a sprinkle of garlic salt or regular salt. You have that control because you cooked your meal at home and it's not a high sodium meal. delicious. So again, this makes four servings if you need it to be higher in protein. It's only eight grams of protein per serving. If you need higher protein, which some people might, some people, people might not, but that's where having some sort of like crumbled tofu on top would be really good. Of course, this is something that's easy. If you're cooking and you're trying not to, you're trying to eat more plant-based and your family's like, I want chicken, I want meat, cook it separately, right? I mean, they want ground turkey or they want meat or something that they would add to this, then you could cook that separately and you could have this, um, which is more protective for your kidney health. And then they can have that and you're not cooking, you know, completely separate different meals because you keep the meat separately. So this is a coconut curry soup. It's plant-based, it's kidney friendly. It's great for this cold weather, at least that I'm having here. If you um, try it, please leave in the comments, like and share with your family and friends. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel and let me know any other types of recipes, food reviews, nutrition information for kidney health that you have. I'll see you guys next time.